<laughs> yes, I hope the technical uh, difficulties will go, uh, go on. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we want to, uh, as we were preparing the presentation, uh, uh, originally we thought it would be uh, 45 minutes. Uh, so for 25 minutes we had to really think about what is important. We wanted to uh, give as much context as possible for, so that you understand the problems that we're trying to solve. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's see uh, how we uh, manage to do that. Uh, in, we never did it in 25 minutes yet, so I think... <laughs> yeah, technical problems go on. Okay, good. What, what Zalando is, uh, uh, if you are, I suppose in, in Great Britain you know what Zalando is. H how many people actually know what Zalando is? Okay, wonderful. Uh, how many people's partners, girlfriends, boyfriends are buying stuff at Zalando? Oh, so you are the only ones who are buying at Zalando. Very good, very good. <laughs> and. Um, we are practically here. Oh, shoot, the technical problems. They solved the technical problems. Nearly. So, um, yes, we, uh, as I started at Zalando, uh, the company was very small. Uh, and uh, the technology department, as I started at Zalando uh, more than five years ago, was only uh, about 40 people at all. So now the technology department is uh, 1,100 uh, uh, persons, and we are hiring up to 50 uh, developers per month. We sucked uh, in every talent in Berlin. Uh, we are sucking in all the talent from all uh, cities around, and all, uh, uh, around, I mean, Moscow, uh, 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 Budapest, Bucharest, yeah, uh, India, it's, a, it's not a city, I know. Uh, oh, you, we can actually, it's a little bit, you, uh, so the focus should be on the, on the screen, I think. Or I should enable it. No, it should be enabled. Yeah, wonderful. Um, we're a little bit squashed here, but uh, whatever. Uh, uh, excuse us for this uh, technical problem. Okay, so, uh, to say uh, fast, so I'm Valentin and uh, Fabian, uh, he, who is actually doing things, I, I'm just talking about them. Uh, so what is Zalando? Uh, Zalando is a fashion store, you, I already asked you. Uh, so we operate in 15 countries. We have uh, four fulfillment centers and, uh, and so on. Uh, revenues are quite high. Uh, so, uh, and we recently have been uh, doing very successful IPO and so on. Uh, the number of offices that we have is also quite high. One of the biggest uh, offices is uh, in Dublin, and uh, Adrian was a little bit uh, angry with us about this. Uh, <coughs> some uh, specialists should come from somewhere. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so we're rapidly growing. Uh, yeah, I want to give you, as I said, a little bit of the context. Uh, so how did it start when I started at Zalando? It was a classical, uh, tiny online shop with PHP and MySQL. We were at the moment the biggest users of Magento uh, system uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, at some moment, uh, we understood it will not work. So actually, it was not me who understood uh, uh, the guys who were uh, operating with this thing. And then they called me, and I was moving uh, this thing from MySQL to Postgres. Uh, and we did the reboot. Uh, six uh, weeks without weekends, and we had wonderful system. Uh, we had microservices uh, <coughs> using SOAP RPC, uh, Postgres, and, and so on. Uh, and. Uh, this is how it looked like, Ma microservices, as we call it. We, we call this system a vintage infrastructure. Uh, we, ha we have, uh, uh, for now, still uh, 150 microservices running. Uh, and uh, the typical process of uh, uh, operating of this kind of business logic and uh, these services is that every business, uh, <coughs> every service has business logic that accesses database, and then the <coughs> 
ETL process and business intelligence guys and database uh, engineers uh, know how to extract data from the uh, databases. The ETL process sometimes is not visible to the developers because uh, DBAs know the databases, they can extract data from there. And uh, we have data warehouse system where uh, all, all analysts can actually do the analytical stuff. Uh, yeah, it's very, uh, from one side, it's use case specific, uh, and, uh, but from the other hand, you, you have what you need. So you, you know usually what you need. Uh, so with this architecture, we were quite happy. But uh, we were growing further and further and further, and uh, um, uh, organizational structures were moving and uh, changing and uh, uh, cracking, and uh, we were fixing and changing the organizational structures. And at some moment, not some moment, actually it was uh, all, this, uh, all the time, uh, people want to have access to cool technologies. Uh, but this is the typical uh, answer from the management, yeah. We're afraid. Uh, what, this is what started to happen. People started to leave. Uh, and uh, as you understand, we're growing fast. We cannot afford uh, talent to leave. So what we did last year uh, was radical agility. Is one, it was really huge change for the whole uh, um, Zalando, especially Zalando technology. Uh, autonomy, purpose, mastery were, were proclaimed the main ideas. Uh, teams got autonomy. Uh, teams could decide what they do. Uh, the teams own the technology stack and they are responsible for that. And uh, we also kind of proclaimed that AWS and cloud will be something where we're moving to. Uh, we want to abandon our uh, data centers by the end of this year. Uh, if we manage that, we're working uh, on that. Uh, but, and this is, and also we proclaimed that the services will be built in the form of microservices and we'll be talking to each other using uh, REST APIs. Uh, and uh, as you see, kind of, if, if you are building a, s a standalone service, it should actually own its data. It shouldn't write to one single big database that can be accessed by business analyst, analysts, though they want it. So, uh, yeah, I already said that. Uh, and applications are hidden behind the walls of VPCs in AWS, so, the, the, so that uh, one person, uh, one team in its own VPC account, in, in its own AWS account cannot destroy other teams' uh, infrastructure. They are responsible only for infrastructure in their AWS account. So this is how the guys were running around at, at the moment. Uh, uh, the ETL processes, we, we saw that they could break completely. Uh, and uh, so we started building uh, uh, Nakadi uh, in system, Nak Nakadi event bus. It's a very small, uh, broker on top of Kafka uh, to, and, but unfortunately, we don't have time to go into details for Nakadi uh, event, ju it's just an event bus with some minor tweaks and additions that help developers work uh, with, with the event bus, like Kafka, for example, security, for example, uh, m minimal schema validation, and so on. The work is in progress and it's uh, completely open, open source. So if you want, you can uh, have a look. Uh, and uh, then every, uh, the idea is very simple. Every microservice pushes into the event bus. Event bus, from the event bus, you are pushing things into the something, into business intelligence. But this small uh, arrow is, that is not actually small, uh, it's a, it's a question mark. How, how actually do we do this? And wh what we built, what we're trying to do, and uh, this is more or less now when I want to give uh, the uh, word to Fabian, who is building this part and who will be able to uh, give you more uh, idea about the infrastructure. And I will be available for the questions if there will be questions, actually. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Valentin. Um, so 
Let me introduce you a little bit to what that question mark actually is. Um, it's got to be a little bit more technical uh, than all the previous, by the way, really great presentations. <laughs> but I hope uh, uh, that's going to be um, uh, fine for you guys. So we basically have built uh, our own, so to say, data integration platform, which, is, which we call Saiki. It's um, Javanese, so not Japanese, but Javanese for a queue. Um, and that's kind of also predicting uh, what we actually used here as well. Um, no one is speaking Javanese of us, uh, don't worry, it's Google Translate. So, um, so we basically built Zaiki. What is Zaiki consisting of? Um, let's di uh, deep uh, dive into this. Um, at first, we're using uh, Kafka here as well. You could ask now, why are we having a, another Kafka here? There's already a Kafka in Akadi. Why not use this one? Um, what Valentin quickly jumped through was that every team has to use REST APIs only and communicate via JSON and to be as flexible as possible. And we actually wanted to decouple um, from um, Nakadi as much as possible. So we at first have, um, like we are decoupled from the accounts. There are two separate AWS accounts and our own rules of play say uh, that we cannot access the Kafka natively in the Nakadi account. So um, we have to basically set up our own to, um, to use tools which are using Kafka APIs natively. Um, I hope all of you know Kafka, it was talked uh, about it already a little bit here. Um, it's this unified lock by LinkedIn. It's basically, um, yeah, kind of a distributed locks service. What I sometimes also uh, refer to it is um, kind of a buffer. You basically, the events are coming into Nakadi and we can um, get them as fast as we want and then process them also as fast as we want. Um, what also comes with our own Kafka is obviously our own configuration um, possibilities, um, like we can enable lock, lock compaction on it or define uh, another retention time because we want to keep the messages longer, something like that. Um, that means we have basically now all the events coming from all the applications uh, in our account. But uh, we don't want to have them in Kafka, we want to have them in our data warehouse so everyone uh, in the BI department can access them. So we actually need to have another component here, um, which we call Tukang. Um, this is basically a small service which takes all the messages out of Kafka and puts them into S3 and exposes via REST API the metadata information, where is this stored, uh, how long it's going to be stored there, um, um, and some other metadata, which the data warehouse needs essentially to download this data into the data warehouse. Um, there's also some cleansing in the data. So, for example, the teams can send uh, data in out, uh, out of order. Um, Tukang is taking care in the first step already of that. There might be duplicates in, the, in there which uh, it's uh, taking care of. Then afterwards, as I said, it's materializing the data in S3 and provides the data so the data warehouse can actually download it into, uh, it can download it locally. Um, this is it, basically. This is a way of how we're doing right now the whole data integration thing. But as you've seen, I left a little bit of space because actually uh, this is giving us more possibilities than just the classic ETL loading process. But I will come to that in a, late, uh, in a second. Um, uh, Let's compare really quick uh, the uh, old and the new process. So the old process was relying on those delta loads. We basically opened up a JDBC connection to all the Postgres databases, and we're putting that into our uh, data warehouse. Uh, the new stuff is completely relying on the event stream. And um, we only use RESTful HTTPS connections now. One big issue we are currently facing is actually before in the old world, we were, at, because it was all in the data center, we could just access the Postgres databases and check actually the real source data and compare that to the data warehouse data. Uh, since every team is autonomous and the access to their um, persistence layer is restricted, we cannot do that anymore. Um, and this means we have to trust the te delivery teams even more for the correctness of their data. 
which is fine for us. As long as they do their job, that should be fine, right? Um, obviously, the old uh, process was kind of Postgres dependent. Now everyone can do whatever they want. As long as they send an event uh, to Nakadi, we're fine with it. And uh, another thing, which I really quickly want to point out, is that in the old world, we had, um, so to say, end-to-one data stream. So we had several Postgres databases, but one data warehouse, which was getting all of this data. Now we have an end-to-end -end stream, because we can also split this box up here and say, OK, we're actually getting the data into the data warehouse, but we can also um, upload it to some other DB, I don't know, for data science reasons or more f data science focused reasons. Um, so uh, what else can we do with this platform? This is actually allowing us way more than just the normal data integration and into the data warehouse uh, stream. I said we are using Kafka and that we chose it because of uh, the strong support from the community. For example, um, stream processing. Um, we're using, or we decided to focus a lot on stream processing um, with a uh, framework called Apache Flink. Who of you have heard of Apache Flink, actually? Well, words get, word gets spread around, I would say. Um, maybe some of you know Spark Streaming. Essentially, Apache Flink is kind of Spark Streaming, but even better, because um, if you have Spark Streaming, you process <coughs> If they, they say like it's micro batches and everything, and that's essentially true, so Spark waits like um, of a batch of 10, let's say, and processes that batch. Flink is processing each event independently on, a, on one node. Kind of like Storm a little bit. But um, it's written in Scala, it's written in Berlin. Actually, it was um, founded at the Technical University uh, in Berlin. So that means for us also, we can basically get the guys in 30 minutes into our office, which is, um, and we did it already, which is really cool. And I guess for London, it's kind of the same. I mean, it's a two hours flight. And it's highly scalable, which uh, was also important for us. If you want to read more about why we choose actually Flink uh, over Spark here, um, feel free to check out a blog post we wrote about it. Um, as I said, very good connectors to Kafka and also to Elasticsearch, which were actually uh, adding then on top of the stream processing, or not on top, but we're writing the data into Elasticsearch, which enables us uh, real-time monitoring. Real-time monitoring in the sense of, I think someone was touching the topic really uh, shortly, business process uh, monitoring. So technically check if the platform works. For example, um, check if order velocities are right. Do, do we get enough orders currently for that time frame, Or is there like a drop in there? Same for delivery uh, velocities, or um, checking SLAs of correlated events. For example, is a, a shipment being sent out after 48 hours uh, um, from the order? Um, we can analyze the data on the fly and visualize that for the tech controlling team. Uh, we are actually we started with Kibana, we, but we were kind of shifting right now to a custom written Python Flask um, application. Um, another possibility to extend the platform is a concept we call the data lake. Kind of a buzzword nowadays, but we see the data lake uh, under the motto of free the data from the silos. Um, we basically want to have, um, or we basically want to bring high quality data together. Um, currently, there are those data entity boundaries. Every team knows this and that, and you probably cannot prohibit that really, but we want to try to bridge those boundaries as good as possible with the data lake. Um, store the data in a centralized, secure, cost-efficient data storage, which would be in our case S3, because it's currently the most convenient to use. We're investigating also to use HDFS on top of maybe EC2 or something, but um, currently our fav favorable solution is S3. And, um, we want to store potentially all data, which is be, uh, useful for analytic analytical activities in the enterprise. Um, so that's basically it. That's the uh, Saiki platform which uh, we built. Um, there's obviously it's a it's already a technical deep dive, but there's actually way more to it. For example, the still big but small arrow to the Kafka cluster is actually two components and there's obviously a little bit more to it. But um, generally speaking, this is a um, uh, stream uh, of 
events, and it goes through the Kafka into the uh, REST API, which uh, the data warehouse calls and downloads the data from, from AWS S3. Um, and I'm also coming now to my last slide, and uh, I got five minutes, so I can actually elaborate a little bit more on each of these links. That's cool. Um, we are, as many of you probably already uh, also are, um, we are big fans of open source. We actually have a dedicated um, GitHub open source uh, site there where you can check out all our projects. For example, some of these, um, if you're planning on getting into microservices in the future, we wrote some frameworks for Python and for uh, Scala slash uh, play to, um, you basically define your RESTful API first with the Swagger file, and then just um, connect all the methods um, to it uh, from the backend Python code, and you basically can have up and running a Python code in 15 minutes. It's pretty cool. We also um, open sourced all our guidelines, which we, are, which we think is cool uh, on RESTful APIs and what the teams actually should follow on to communicate with each, with each other. Um, Everything I just said to Zaiki, we want to publish as much as possible to, the, um, to our wiki on GitHub. Um, I'm just starting to create it, so don't blame me if there's not that much yet, but um, there's more coming in the next weeks for sure. We write blog posts all the time, so feel free to check that out. And we also open sourced our deployment organization tool, so to say, for AWS. Um, which creates um, the immutable stacks um, and is also, since we're from Germany, we're having uh, a lot of audit and uh, compliance issues we have, which we have to follow. Uh, and this is uh, the Stubbs infrastructure uh, framework, so to say, doing for us on AWS. Um, and that's about it. Thank you.